I, 30 female have been engaged to my fiancé, 32 male together for two and a half years. I work as a management consultant in coveted firm, and my fiancé and I met in grad school, he's in finance, and we make great money. We have a good life together and are set to marry in the next three months. My fiancé was with an ex for nine years, but never proposed to her, so he dumped her. He was out of that relationship for a year before we started seeing each other. He was honest and told me that he really hurt her, but the more time he spent with her, the more he realized she wasn't someone he ever really wanted as a life partner. Over time, we grow attached and he confessed he never connected with anyone like that before. He always knew what kind of woman and lifestyle he wanted and what kind of woman would make him fall in love. And it happens to be me, and he proposed to me after one and a half years. We're both child-free. Some twisted part of me felt the glee validation and ego stroking as I got this man to commit despite dating him for a much shorter time. According to him, his ex was also child-free, but he mentions that he doesn't think that he ever really loved her and stayed with the army because of how long they'd been together. When he dumped her, she was obviously a mess she desperately wanted to marry him and tried to get him back, but he'd moved on. Last week, my fiancé took me as a plus one to his college reunion party. Whereas X was also going to be there. It didn't bother me unless something went extremely out of line, and it did. I was feeling somewhat territorial. I made it a point to wear my engagement ring and so did he. It looked like chatter went around, and she found out and got absolutely intoxicated. She barged into our circle and started confronting my fiancé about how he found a hotshot eye candies his trophy wife when she should have earned that title. I kept silent, but then she turned to me and said, men like him marry the woman in front of them when they're ready for marriage. So good luck. I was seething but kept my calm and in front of people around me told her, oh, honey, sorry, but he didn't want you. If he wanted to propose, he would have next time. I hope your role is not limited to helping others refine their preferences in partners. I don't know what happened, but she started hysterically crying after hearing it. She was intoxicated, so she crashed against the table and made a complete fool in herself. We shortly left after she was removed from the party by the hosts. My fiancé and I thought she deserved to hear that, but now I'm starting to feel it was maybe too harsh. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot conceited egotistical idiot. You won. You got the dude. She was intoxicated and, yes, shouldn't have confronted you but you could have been the bigger person and just walked away, but you didn't. You had to rub a nose in it and gleefully watch her lose it. And what the heck? It stroked your ego that he asked you to marry him one and a half years in. Most polite kind people do not need their ego stroked, but you do. Oh, boy. We get it. You are the beautiful princess who got picked. Yay you. And she's the old hacker didn't get picked. It took a 10-page dissertation to let us know you got picked. Congrats. Okay. Why are you so desperate to prove how superior you are? Why can't you have compassion for her? You could just as easily have been the other woman he led on for nine years and then just moved on from I have no respect for your fiancé. A spineless little worm. Me 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 me. Awesome. Me 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 me. Hope he sounds like such a delight. Darling, you do know about karma, don't you? Just give him six and a half more years and you'll find out. Just wait till he gets bored of you. Like he got bored of her. That poor girl. Exactly. Opie will spend the next six and a half years telling everyone she got picked. But then she'll have to start all over trying to get picked again. Opie, how are you in your thirties and still have this kind of high school relationship naivety like getting married in three months was some mic drop. Like engagements and marriages never crash and burn. The two of you are in for an extremely harsh wake-up call somewhere down the line. Bless your hearts. Two and a half years, and you believe in some sort of soulmate nonsense that will keep either of you from improving yourselves until you destroy each other because you both already think you're the cream of the crop. Ah, yeah. Bless. 
I gave birth to my second child a few weeks ago. I already have a son. This time, I had a daughter. My husband and I named her Alana. We announced the name and didn't expect any real reaction to the name. But my sister had an almost immediate reaction of OMG. Why would you name your child Alana? It was so confusing to me because it was such a strong reaction. I told her we thought the name was pretty and were growing nicely with our daughter. She told me it was the worst name ever, and I was so shocked that I didn't even ask her why she hated it so much. We didn't speak for a week, and then she said we needed to talk. I agreed because I was still so taken aback by her reaction. She showed up at my home and overreacted more to the name. She said it was so crappy that we chose the name, and how could we do that to her niece? I asked her what she was talking about and asked her why she hated the name so badly. I was wondering if she'd had some terrible experience with an Alana, unbeknownst to me. But all she could say was that the name was ugly and an easy target for being made fun of. I asked how, and she said it was puke, and nobody should be saddled with such a terrible name. She said we needed to change the name before our daughter got too old. She said she didn't know what to say to me, knowing I chose an Alana as a baby name. She was giving me nothing reasonable, at least to me since I don't think Alana is an easy name to be bullied over, so I told her her reaction to the name was over the top and totally rude to my husband and to me. I told her she might not love the name, but she need not go so hard on us for giving our daughter the name. She told me I was rude and should listen to her when she was trying to save my daughter from torment and that I should trust her enough to believe her and not criticizing. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I was expecting some crazy over-the-top name like McKay Lee Broccoli or Tinkerbell or something that hasn't aged quite as well. Alana is a normal name. Tell your sister to get over herself and stay in her lane. Your baby will be fine with her name. May I suggest Lanny as a nickname? LOL. I don't get it either. How can an emotionally mature adult have such an adverse reaction to a name without being able to explain why? Unless you can provide some context, I think your response is fair. Alana isn't exactly an unusual name or anything. I think we've all heard of it. It's quote, unquote, quite a normal name. Honestly, her reaction is so weird that I was thinking that her husband or someone cheated on her with someone named Alana or similar. I think OP's sister loves the name but wanted it for herself. And if OP changes it due to her reasons, then she's free to use it later. I don't think sister has ever voiced a love of the name and then OP stole it. The sister just got that name in mind. I know it sounds so dumb and illogical for her to possibly then claim the name later on if Op did change it. But we do live in crazy land after all. I'm getting married soon, and I've decided I don't want children except for my pre-tween twins at my wedding. They mean a lot to me, and I want them to be part of my big day. They'll be with the babysitter the entire time at the reception so they won't be a bother to anyone. My siblings have young kids, and they were upset about my decision. They said it's unfair for me to allow my kids, but not theirs. They accused me of being selfish and said I should invite all the family's children or none. They even threatened to not attend my wedding if I didn't change my mind. I think they're being dramatic, and I believe I have the right to choose who I want at my wedding. I love my nieces and nephews, but I don't want them to disrupt the atmosphere of the celebration. I also don't want to exclude my own kids because they are my children, and I want them to witness me marrying their father. Am I the idiot for only allowing my twins at my wedding, but no other children? You're so selfish for one your wedding to be all about you. Geez. Not the idiot. Anyone with a brain can accept that the bride and groom's kids are a special case. In fairness, I could understand why it would feel like a slight to your sister, but she needs to remember it's not about her or her kids. There's a difference between children and your children. But will your twins find it lonely not having their cousins to play with at the wedding? Being a child in an adult-only situation could be a bit boring, even if it is a wedding. I can see your sibling's point of view, but be prepared not to have them at your wedding. Can anyone explain to me why people think kids are such a massive problem at a wedding? 
What exactly is the atmosphere people are so concerned about not disrupting? Kids are so traditionally a part of an American wedding that they have unique roles within the ceremony. Like, what is the atmosphere you're going for? A hushed classical concert, a loose cocktail party with wild intimacy afterward. All the weddings I've attended have had a few kids around, and I just don't get it. Good question. I hope people answer because I don't get it either. I've never been to a wedding where a child starts screaming and running down the aisle. Sure. I guess it could happen, but you could equally ruin your day by having a stomach bug in the middle of the ceremony. Alcohol is way more likely to stir up wedding drama, yet we're really advocating for it. Also, when do people decide they have a right to bring their children? Literally since the dawn of weddings, children have always attended weddings. It's way more insane, in my opinion, to expect everyone, you know, to drop everything and hire a sitter because God forbid their attention not be laser trained on you for one second. I, a female teen, have a brother, teen who is autistic. He's a year older, but was held back a grade, so we're in the same grade. Ever since I was little, I felt like I don't matter. And the only reason my parents had me was for my brother to have a friend to be clear. I'm not neglected or abused, but my parents expect me to build my entire life around my brother. When I was a go, they always forced me to do whatever my brother wanted because we had to do everything together. When I wanted to learn piano and he wanted to do karate, we both had to do karate. When my friends invited me to play dates, I could only go if he could. When I was really lit my parents would basically just force the other parents to take him, but as soon as I got older, I just stopped going anywhere because I didn't want to take my brother with me. To make things worse, we moved when we were in sixth grade, and it was almost impossible for me to make new friends because my brother was with me all the time. Middle school was also because seventh grade was online and my brother was constantly clinging to me in eight. Once we got to high school, I just stopped caring about what my parents said and did whatever I wanted. My rebellion mainly consisted of joining leadership in many clubs. I made a lot of friends and started hanging out with them. My parents very clearly expressed their disapproval, but they weren't gonna lock me up to stop me doing things without my brother. I love my brother, but being forced to share my whole life with him as kid has made me deeply resent him. He has no friends, so he sits in his room pretty much all the time. He throws massive tantrums whenever I go out with my friends, or attend extracurricular events. I feel bad for him, but I'm sick of being his constant unwilling companion. And there's nothing I can do to help him. My parents always take his side and try to make me feel bad for living my life. Our latest conflict was about homecoming. I'm a princess, and I'm excited because I couldn't go last year because I was sick. My brother asked the girl to go with him, but she rejected him. So he's really upset and wants me not to go because he's not going. Today, there was a picnic to kick homecoming week and he didn't go. But when I got back from it, he threw a huge tantrum when I left and was still crying when I got back hours later because he didn't want me to go to homecoming. My parents asked if I could just not go, but I told them that I don't care if my brother doesn't like it, and he can't control my whole life. He said his mental health is suffering because he has no friends and doesn't have the best grades, and watching me have fun and do great at school isn't helping. I told them that his mental health was not my problem, and I would go to homecoming whether they liked it or not. My brother still crying in his room and didn't come out to eat dinner, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your parents aren't doing you or your brother any favors by thinking the solution is for you to stay home. Your brother has to learn that the world won't revolve around him. One day your parents won't be here, and he needs to be given the tools to live independently or in a group home. Based on what you've said, it doesn't sound like he's so severe that he's unable to function. I'm surprised your parents aren't doing more to foster his independence. He needs help with his mental health, but it's up to them to get it for him and help him. You are not his parent. Absolutely. It's ridiculous for her to be expected just to pause her life for her brother's sake. Also, what about OP's mental health? Would hers not be harmed by throwing her life away because her parents and brother wanted to? 
All, you're mistaken when you say you have not been abused or neglected by your parents. This absolutely is toxic behavior. You all need family counseling. It's your parents' responsibility to help your brother cope in life without sacrificing you to do so. You're an independent person not an emotional support animal for your brother. You deserve to have interests and a life of your own. As a side note, I can only hope my children's future teenage rebellions consist of joining leadership programs and extracurriculars. Like seriously, a mother can only dream of such rebellions, please keep doing that. It'll be great for you in full sincerity. When you have no contact with them in a few years, I hope they finally realize what they've done to you. Grow. Be free and happy. Live your life. I have a preschool daughter. She's in her princess phase. My sister-in-law and I differ on a few things, but one thing we disagree on is boy and girl clothes and toys. I wasn't strict with it when Emma, my daughter was little. She wore all types of clothes since she was a baby and she didn't care. At the time, sister-in-law would give baby boy and I didn't care. The issue is she keeps doing this. Emma is really clearly a girly girl. She likes dresses. She plays with fake makeup, and she has a fake kitchen set. She has some boy toys like trucks and whatnot, but they collect dust. I've talked to her before. It was Emma's birthday yesterday, and sister-in-law gave her guy clothes. My daughter made a face when she saw them. I waited until after the party to give them back. My daughter made it clear to me that they were ugly and wouldn't wear them. We had a huge argument, and she caught me a joke for staying with gender stereotypes. I'm doubting myself on this. Not the idea. I don't agree with gender stereotypes either, but I also know that unless it's inappropriate attire, like a swimming costume in winter, or going with a four-year-old about their wardrobe wastes everyone's precious time. Your daughter isn't gonna wear those, and your sister-in-law wasting her money, and you're stopping her from doing so. There are other things she could buy apart from clothes. A.G., there are so many kids' books on brilliant women from history, she could get some of those. Gifts should be targeted to the recipient, not the giver's belief. That said, your daughter is now getting old enough for you to work with her on graciously accepting gifts we don't like without making faces, etc. Lol, that's very true. What are boy clothes exactly? Comfortable, functional clothing, maybe? Not pink? Ah, your daughter is highly unlikely to have strong feelings about aesthetic things, but is mirroring your strong signals. So, yeah, you are the idiot. Both reinforcing strong gender conformity and for rejecting gifts. Say thank you. Donate them and be grateful.